When was the last time you did something for the first time? Well, that's the thought for today. This one fine morning, I was in Goa at my friend's place. And it was my reading hour of the day around 10 a.m. And I usually start my day with reading one page of this Daily Laws book by Robert Greene. This book is designed in a way that every day is marked with date and you just read one page and you just fire up with motivation. You need to kickstart your day. As I was putting down this book, I read on the cover page of this book called Poke the Box by Seth Godin said when was the last time we did something for the first time and it got me so intrigued that I quickly picked it up and I flipped the back side to read the core gist of the book which said if you're happy being just a dreamer perhaps you don't need this book if you're enjoying the status quo you don't even consider reading this and if you're content waiting for success to find you well please put this book down and go find something else to read and this got me so fired up and intrigued of what's inside. This was my first read by this author. And man, the way he writes, it's so rhetorical and so thought provoking that it got me intrigued and I started flipping through the pages. And I stumbled upon where he talks about the seven imperatives for success in anything in your life. The first imperative is to be aware aware of the market of the opportunities and who you are the second is being educated so that you understand what's around you you're well informed of the options the third is being connected so that you can be trusted to engage let's say you have skills and you're aware and then if you are connected people spread the word of your goodwill Fourth is being consistent so that the system knows what to expect. You can do a good job once a day and then second time you don't show up, then no one's gonna trust you. With consistency, you build trust of people around you. And the fifth imperative he talks about is building an asset so that you have something to sell so that you can help people around you in ways that they need help. Then sixth imperative is to be productive so you can be well priced. You value your time in a way that people value you for the service and the time and the knowledge you bring to the table. And then lastly and the most important imperative is having the guts and the heart and the passion to ship. Well, if you have all of these you are unstoppable. Then as I went through more pages, it talks about how in society we have list of things that we are not allowed to do. Like most employees can give you a long list of all the things that not allowed to do. Not allowed to do in schools, relationship and jobs. The park near my house doesn't allow dogs, non-residents or even birthday parties. It's interesting that the loud list is harder to remember and to write down. I think we might be afraid of how much freedom we actually have and how much we are expected to do with that freedom. It's comforting to live with a list of what's not allowed. We remember, we push against it, but ultimately we enjoy the confinement that the limit brings us. When revolutions appear, when the list gets much shorter, it's surprising how long it takes for us to take action. Simple example, how long did it take after the birth of blogs or Twitter for you to begin speaking up? Before this, you had no cheap, easy, allowable way to speak your mind to the world. You were just not allowed or you didn't have the means to. And then all of a sudden you were. And yet most people took years to start and take an action. Then he talks about a funny concept of how the society builds imaginary boundaries and puts you in a confined zone where you're allowed to act in just a box. He tells a funny example where he uh, mentions his dog had an invisible fence collar. There was a wire around his small yard where Whenever the dog 
got close to the fence, he got an electric small shock. And even when he took off that collar, the dog was still afraid to go close to the fence because he had this imaginary boundary in his head and a shock that might come if he tried to get close to the fence. Which is funny in how our society also puts us in a confinement and someone who is only curious enough to poke the, out of the box is able to go far away and reach the goals that they aim to. He also talks about resistance and how often we are held back by fear by the voice in our heads telling us we are not good enough and that we will fail. But the truth is the only way to overcome this resistance is to take action, to start doing something, anything at all, just to move forward. Which is where he introduces the term flux and fear and how people often confuse the two. While flux is about the change, the movement, fear is about the resistance to flux because it tags along the possibility of failure. Not sure why people in our society are so afraid of failure. Gordon talks about how failure is such an essential part of success and how it pushes us in our learning curve which encourages us to adopt a positive attitude and by embracing failure, we acknowledge that setbacks and mistakes are inevitable. But they also offer valuable opportunities for growth and improvement. Success is rarely a smooth and straightforward path. Along the way, we encounter so many challenges and obstacles that threaten to derail us. But it's not surmountable. By confronting failure head-on, learning from the mistakes and persisting in the face of adversity, we can overcome these obstacles and continue moving forward towards our desired outcomes. He also talks about not fearing the uncertain because after all, uncertainty is where the new begins. There's so much that this book talks about. Make sure to join me on my Instagram podcast group where I keep sharing what I am reading and other cool stuff to keep you pumped throughout your journey. Lastly, if you are someone who is looking for your next sleep, these days I read multiple books because I am a man who likes to have options. But at times I rely on my friend's page, which is called the Vyanshu Reads. I'll leave a link of his page right here, where he has a few hundreds of books, uh, where he posts regularly the gist of these books. And you can just go on Instagram, try to see what intrigues you and pick it up for your next read. And I hope this video gave you a gist of the slimmest value packed book and perhaps encourage you to pick it up for yourself. And until then, keep reading and I'll see you in the next video.